Welcome to another video. This is the end of another week. Um, I'm probably not going to post this till the middle of this week though. Uh, we've done quite a bit of numbers, letters, counting, reading and we've been out most days except the last couple of days. Um, hey Rosie Bear. She wasn't in nursery on Friday because of the snow so I thought today I'd do a video about some basic essentials for um, cooking like if you get snowed in what you need in your cupboards what to look out for what's left in the supermarkets and the shops um yeah and maybe a couple of activities of how to entertain your children so let's get into the video um so um i'm not going to take you into my cupboards like i thought i was going to do if you would like me to i am happy to um but i don't want to bore anybody by going through my fridge and cupboards so um, I shall just talk you through and make a list below, a shopping list below if you like. Uh, so, you go into your supermarket at the moment, all the fresh fruit and veg is gone, all the milk is gone, all the bread is gone. Right, bread, head for the flour aisle, make your own. That's the bottom line. Buy a bread mix, buy some yeast, buy some bread flour, whatever, make your own. I know it's a pain in the backside, but it's snowing and if you don't like snow... Uh, it's something to do with the children as well. If you've got kids, get them to knead the dough. Um, you don't have to have sandwiches for lunch. You can have soup. You don't have to have toast for breakfast. You can have cereal. And then that's what we come into milk. There are plenty of plant-based milks out there. They do not taste gross. They just taste slightly different to what people are used to for cow's milk. Also, you can make your own. So if the plant-based milk has been raided buy a lot of oats and you can make your own oat milk i will link a recipe below and if you'd like i'd do a video on how i make mine um when you put oat milk in cereal it doesn't taste very different to having normal milk in there really oat milk is also the one milk that has passed my mum's acceptability in her tea and she's quite fussy about how she has her how she has her tea. She wasn't keen on coconut milk, she wasn't keen on almond milk, but when she put oat milk in there for her, she was like, no, I, I like that. So uh, yeah, it passed my mum's tea test, so it can't be that bad. Um, the other thing is, is don't worry about the, the fresh fruit and veg. If there's any left, great, buy it. Especially if you've got young kids, fresh fruit and veg is great. What you need to look for though is the canned stuff. Uh, if you've got a freezer and it's not full, obviously frozen as well, um, but stock up on canned, like I've got pineapples and pears for Rosie in case in case we run out, but with our snow melting, uh, we're fine. Um, I also already had a pretty good stocked fruit bowl in the first place. If I keep looking over there, I'm just checking on her because I'm cooking in the kitchen and I just got to keep an eye on what Rosie's up to in the living room. She's uh, reading a story on my tablet. Um, yes, also tin wise, beans, pick up beans, lots and lots of beans. Uh, they're a great filler, they're a great f uh, source of protein, um, chickpeas are a good powerhouse of protein and uh, for, you, for you and you can put them in salads, you can mash them to make chickpea tuna, um, just a variety of beans. I've got a recipe for uh, bean burgers that I've made that my husband loves so they've passed a pretty good test there because he's quite fussy. Um, so yeah, I can do that video for you guys as well. Um, I've bought tinned mushrooms because the way I make my plant-based sausages I use the mushrooms blended up to make a paste and that's what hold them, holds them together basically um, and they also passed my husband's taste test um, what else is there? rice, pasta, things like grains so quinoas um, there is a lovely girl called Jess Beautician on YouTube who shows you how to make a really, really lovely bread. Um, she doesn't make a lot of it in one go, but you could double up, triple up the recipe for that. So check out her recipes. Um, she's got some really nice recipes as well. Uh, so we've got we've got things like rice, quinoa, couscous, pasta, 
Uh, we've got tinned tomatoes to make sauces with. We've already got our, our uh, what do you call it, uh, garlic powder, onion powder. If you've got a well stocked spice rack, you're not going to be eating dull food. Um, also potatoes. Um, I know that's that's sort of a fresh veg, but they put it in bags these days. If there's any potatoes there, grab grab potatoes because obviously you've got jacket potatoes. They can be for lunch as well. And if you've bought beans, you can have baked beans. You can make your own baked beans. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of kind of panic buying of bread and milk, and it just it seems so silly because they're not that nutritious. They really, really aren't. In the grand scheme of things, you would not live off bread and milk for the rest of your life if you can only choose two things. You would need some. You would need other things, more sustainable things. Um, even sweet potatoes are probably um, better for you to have a sweet potato with some beans on it for lunch than have a, than have a sandwich, or just eat two slices of white, especially white bread. Um, yeah. So, I just thought I'd let you know what we've kind of got in so uh we didn't have to panic too much we don't have much in the sense of frozen dinners but i'm trying to replace all of our frozen dinners that you just shove in the oven with uh plant-based alternatives so this is a good opportunity this week to do that so um also don't throw your fruit and veg out before before um it goes green or white uh we picked up raspberries in tesco's it was empty the uh, fruit and veg aisle was absolutely empty and then I walked past a shelf and someone had put two lots of raspberries back because they went out of date the day before or that day and it was just like they're not green yet they're not even turning white they're fine and this is the next day and they're still fine they're probably still gonna be fine tomorrow um with fruit and veg the sell by date it's they have to put it on there for whatever reason but you can see when fruit and veg goes off you don't have to throw it until and I feel like I shouldn't have to be saying that and some people may be thinking well duh and that you already know that but you'd be surprised how many people will throw it out just because it's gone past the sell by date so don't do it eat it feed it to your children when it starts growing mold then it's gone bad I thought I'd include some recipes in here as well so I'm gonna take you through making some stock and some soup and um, I'll probably include some more recipes on in our channel as well just if anybody is interested in how how we are transitioning to part plant based and um, it's nice to share isn't it some yes, stock because we've run out there's none in the shops that's that's uh, vegan uh, it's all chicken or beef and um, I plan on making a rice dish later this week and I don't want to have to go shopping again um, because we've already spent almost our weekly budget just simply on uh, a couple of store cupboard essentials we were low on because it was the end of the week and the end of the month for us so uh, we were low on some things so um, freezer bags what you need to do is make your own stock if you don't already know is every time you cut peel an onion you put some in a freezer bag every time you chop a pepper and you have the bits left over chop it up a bit more finely the bits you don't need put them in there carrots put the peelings in put your ends in, put your potato peelings in, put your stems from your broccoli florets in. I mean, I've been saving this since Christmas, so mine has uh, Brussels sprouts in there as well. Uh, so I've got Brussels sprouts, onions, uh, potato skins, carrot skins, and um, broccoli florets in mine. And um, all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to bring it to a boil and then I'm going to let it boil for about half an hour. I'm going to cover it so I don't lose too much of the water because that's what I want. That's what you want. And then I'm going to pour it through my colander but into a bowl. So I save all the water and I get rid of all that. And then I can compost because we have a compost in our garden. Uh, I will compost the rest. I've also seasoned mine a little bit just because mm, who who doesn't like a little bit more flavour in their stock. Uh, so um, how I'm going to keep this is I am going to pour it from the bowl into a measuring jug and then I'm going to pour it into my ice cube trays. I'm going to freeze it and then once it's frozen I'll pour these into a freezer bag so that I can use the ice cube tray, tray again. Um, and then I've got handy 
one portion of stock cubes for however long we need them for. So yeah, I hope this tip helps someone uh, start saving your scraps, freeze them as soon as you put them in a, a freezer bag and um, put them in the freezer, add to it every time you have something. When it starts getting a bit too full, don't put too much of one thing in there. So if you find you're cutting a lot of onions a week, maybe put two in and then start a new one. If you're uh, peeling a lot of potatoes a week, put a few in, halve and halve it. So you don't want lots of, well, just like one thing in there. So uh, make sure you uh, have a good variety. It also means you need to eat more variety of veg so that you get more flavour in your stock. So I'm going to find the lid for this pot and I'm going to let it boil while me and Rosie finish our lunch. So yes, okay, I shall see you again later. So this is my broth water, basically. This is going to be my stock. I'm waiting for it to cool down and then I'm going to pour it into a measuring drug and get it into my ice cube trays. There's probably too much for just one. So if I run out of ice cube trays, I need to have another ice cube tray. Otherwise, my um, stock is going to be in mice and uh, Lego men and penguin shapes because these are the only other ice cube cake mouldy type things that I have so uh, yes we might have some interesting stock cubes coming up I need to wait for it to cool down though because it's a bit too hot, hot to handle and it can't just go straight in the freezer like this so I'm going to leave it about 10 minutes and I'm going to try this might be my last opportunity to show you how I make elderberry syrup because I only tend to make it in the winter months to kind of boost our immune system so this probably will be my last batch depending how long this cold spell lasts for um, so how to make your own homemade elderberry syrup I'm sure you can find other people who do exactly the same way online but if you're following my channel and you'd like to know how I make it um, I've got half a cup of elderberry syrups in here again I just these things are a lifesaver so these this is a quarter I can't find my two larger ones uh, this is a quarter so I just put two of these in of dried elderberries which I can link below where to buy some if you would like um, also I've put a cinnamon stick in for some flavour and uh, its qualities and I've put four cloves in you can put other things in as well you'll find other people put other things in for other medicinal reasons but I only tend to put these three things in purely because I don't want to overwhelm Rosie's taste buds and um, she likes it as, as I make it so uh, this will be done in the next 10 minutes simmering basically all I've done is bring it to a boil let it simmer and I'm waiting for the water which I put two cups in two cups of water a cup of water is roughly 240 ml um, roughly I believe um, I'm just waiting for the water to reduce by about a half until it thickens up a bit and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll pour it into a bowl through a sieve so the sieve will catch the cloves, the cinnamon and the elderberries and then um, I will add to the elderberry water a sweetener of my choice. So a lot of people go with honey because honey has a lot of medicinal qualities uh, but we are vegan so we don't use it so it's I tend to use date syrup. Um, Rosie really likes it with date syrup and it's one of the most natural sweeteners to use so you can make your own by soaking dates in water and then blending them up or you can buy it from the shop. I tend to buy the one I buy is Meridian this one and it use, I use most of this this is a 330 so I don't get much left over from this. Uh, you mix that in and then you pour it into a container of your choice. Um, I have two of these, one in the fridge which is almost empty. It will fill one and two thirds of one of these and that will last us a couple of months if you keep it in the fridge. So yeah, this is it almost done because you can see, I don't know if you can see this light, the line where I put it in originally and then you can see it's gone down so I'm just waiting for it to go down a little bit more and then it'll be ready to go. So I thought I'd warn you when you first sieve it out it won't look like much because it's just the water side of it it's just the bit that you've infused with the elderberries. Um, what bulks it out is um, adding the date syrup or the honey or the whatever 
Um, so this is ready now for me to pour into here. I should have put this straight into my measuring jug <laughs> uh, on hindsight because then I could have poured it in. So I'm going to pour this into my... I've just created more washing up. I'm going to pour this into my measuring jug. Um, wait for it to cool and then it will go back in the fridge. Uh, I'm making soup. Mark isn't in. Mark's got to work slightly late tonight. So um, he will be picking this up later and reheating it. But if I show you what I'm making... I have no idea if I'm doing it correctly because I've never actually made soup before, not from scratch. So what I have in here it is about one and a half diced, diced carrot. Everything's diced. So it's half a red onion, half a white onion, uh, one and a half carrots, uh, one parsnip, one sweet potato, three smallish white potatoes, about half a cup of peas and half a cup of sweet corn, all boiling in water that has um, vegetable stock in it but I've also put in my broth mix which is like split peas, lentils and whatnot to bulk it out. I was going to put in macaroni but we don't have any macaroni. So it's going to be a, a chunky vegetable uh, soup. That doesn't want to go back now. Um, so I shall let you know if it's a success or not. I know to thicken it out I add cornstarch or arrowroot powder. So. I have some of that. Um, I've been adding this just generally. So the, the broth takes 40 minutes. So that went in a while at the first. I did the onions first. Then I put in the broth mix with the water. Then I added in the carrots and the white potato because they take the next longest. Then I added in the parsnips and the sweet potato because I don't want the sweet potatoes to be completely mushy. And then about five minutes ago, I just added the peas and sweet corn. And this should all be ready in about 15 minutes, ready to cool, ready to cool down for my daughter to eat with me as well. The back pan is lentils because we don't have any cans of lentils. And the plan for next week was to have spaghetti bolognese. And we don't have any, we have the bolognese sauce, we have the spaghetti, but we don't have the mince because it didn't arrive with our shopping. So lentil mince. I will probably end up seeing if I can get some mushrooms somewhere. I knew I should have picked some up in the supermarket. I did see mushrooms as well. I should have got some. Um, so I shall let you know if our soup is a success. And if you want to know how I make lentil bolognese, um, I haven't made my own sauce and I probably won't on Monday. But I can because we do have tin tomatoes. And I'm also going to have a go at the bread mix because that's the one thing. Two things that are missing from the shops are bread and milk. Except we don't eat drink cow's milk. So I'm smugly walking around picking up the cartons of plant-based milks because they're still there. And I'm also walking around picking up packets of oats going, well, if there's no plant-based milk, then I will make my own oat milk. So all these people going, oh, we've got no milk, we've got no milk. It's kind of like, yeah, <laughs> we can make our own. So, um, yeah. I'm going to have a look at my bread mix and see if I need to make it tonight and let it rise overnight or whether I can make it, do it in the morning, leave it for a couple of hours and then make it. Um, although I might do it Monday. We've still got, <sighs> between the two loaves that are open, probably a loaf left of bread, but obviously we might have some with our soup tonight. Uh, Rosie has sandwiches for lunch. I've got two rolls left that are going to go green any day now, so hopefully they'll hold out for me. Um, I should probably add in a couple more videos after this. I just wanted to show you my soup. So I'll let you know if it's a success, okay, success good, in the next video. Does it taste nice? It tastes good. It tastes good, does it? It's scrumptiumptious, Bobby. Oh, I'm so glad. Scrumptiumptious, that is a compliment. I shall put the recipe in the box below then. Hi, I hope you found that interesting. Um, I, I look different in every video because I've filmed this over the few days we've had snow. Um, it's warmed up now. Most of the snow is gone, so there was no need for the panic buying. Um, I'm going to link oat milk below as well, but if anybody would like a walkthrough video, I'll happily do one. Um, yeah, I hope someone found this helpful or interesting. The soup's a good way to use up leftover vegetables. Stock's always handy to have on hand in case all you can cook is pasta or rice and you have nothing to flavour it with, at least you've got some stock water um, or a stock cube. Uh, and elderberry syrup is very good for boosting the immune system over the winter months. So they're all useful recipes. I hope you can get some use out of them. For now, it's Tatar from me and Tatar from the Rosie Bear.